they don't have pews or seats. Um, you have to stand through the whole service. Can you imagine that? Oh, man. Uh, I don't understand why, but they go by ancient tradition. And I'm glad that we can stand up and sit down, move around, and all that kind of stuff. Here's the word of God. I want us to see the difference between these two verses in Proverbs. The first one is light. The second one is dark. The first one is righteousness. The second one is wickedness. So here it goes. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till a full light of day. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. This is the word of God for the people of God. So we're going to be talking about understanding confusion today, okay? Uh, there was a guy that was in the grocery store, his big supermarket, and he couldn't find his wife. At 25 minutes, he's wandering around trying to find his wife. So finally, he walks up to this beautiful young lady. He says, will you talk to me for, oh, maybe a minute or so? And the lady looked confused at him, this young woman. She says, well, I don't understand. She goes, well, I... The only way I can find my wife is, to, is if I start talking to a beautiful woman, she'll come up within 30 seconds. <laughs> there were, talking about confusion, there were three guys that were facing a firing squad. And the first guy, he thought, I know I can do, I can cause a distraction, confuse him, and maybe I can escape. So there he is up against the wall, and they're putting their guns up to fire at him, and he yells out, Avalanche! And then they all get confused, and he jumps over the wall, and he escapes. Well, the second guy goes, well, that's pretty smart. I'm going to try that, too. So they get the guns up, get ready to fire him, fire at him at the fire squad, and he yells out, earthquake! And they all get confused and everything, and he jumps over the wall and escapes. The third guy's watching. He's going, I see what's going on here. I've got a good one. I can't wait. To, I'm going to use mine. Gets up there, standing there, and they put up their guns, and he yells out, Fire! All right. I have a, a quote that we're going to look at right now. It's not in your notes, but here it goes. Living in confusion is like being in a thick fog every day. Many times we become so accustomed to this that we don't even know that we are living in confusion. Um... The only thing I could really relate it to, and some of you that have glasses and maybe contacts, when you were younger, before you got your glasses, do you remember the first time you put your glasses on? I remember I was having trouble in school. I couldn't see the board when the teacher was writing stuff on there, so they moved me to the front, and I still kept flunking. I just couldn't see things. Finally, my mother came to a conclusion, let's take him to the eye doctor, okay? And uh, said, well, you need, you need glasses. So I remember going back, getting my glasses, and they put the glasses on. They go, how they fit? It's great. And then I walk outside. Do you remember the first time you put your glasses on? It's like the sidewalk seemed like it was most closer to you. You know, everything, the curb, stairs, everything seemed so close. And now I could see what was on the board and everything. I didn't even know I was living in a darkness. I didn't know I was living in confusion. And there's a lot of people in the world today that they have just got caught up in the confusion of this world. And they don't even realize it. And it's Jesus who sets us free from confusion in our life. And just becomes, be, become a Christian doesn't mean we'll never have any confusion anymore. We'll still continue to have confusion. Sometimes... The confusion is caused by something that we don't like to talk about as Christians. It's sometimes caused by demonic oppression. Now, Christians cannot be possessed by demons, but we can be oppressed by them. They can come in and they can cause uh, depression, all kinds of different things, to the point where we are oppressed. And the only way that we can get rid of them is to allow righteousness to reign and rule in our life. Like the verse we read earlier where it says, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter to the full light of day. Only Jesus Christ, the light, 
can remove that oppression when demonic forces come in. And I believe, it doesn't matter what I believe, it matters what the Bible says, but I do believe that we're living in, in darker times with more confusion going on in our nation and our world, and it's causing some people great stress, great oppression. And what they need, and what we all need, is we need to go to the light, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, before we get into a definition of what confusion is, I just want to say this about confusion. Usually a person who's confused will vacillate. Usually they will waver or have a difficult time on making a decision. Gee, I don't know what to do. What do you think I should do, Mike? I'm confused. And we vacillate. We can't seem to make a decision. I actually pastored a church where a new family started coming and they gave their hearts to the Lord and there was a husband and wife and they had three girls. The oldest girl was in sixth grade. And the mother and father didn't know how to make any decisions. It's really, it, it's almost funny, but they had the kid decisions. The oldest one was in sixth grade. Okay, can you imagine how that worked out? So as we were discipling them, Bonnie and I, we, it was to, you can't do that. You have to make a decision. And they always seem to be in confusion. There's so much confusion in their home. What we need is we need to go to the light, and Jesus will help us to make sound decisions. You know what else? God can use confusion. You remember in the Old Testament, Gideon took on the Midianite army? What happened? His army was so small, and the Gideon army was 400 times bigger. God made the, the, the Midianites totally confused, and they turned on each other. And you'll read through the Old Testament time and time again where God did that. When Israel was fighting other nations, they didn't even have to lift their sword. Because God would throw the other ones in confusion. But on the most part, confusion does not come from the Lord. So what is confusion? Confusion, you can put it in a few words, is disorder. We serve a God of order. The scripture says the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. And that's why we often say, I need to take a step of faith, right? So it is disorder, and we know who is the author of disorder. It's jumbled commotion. It's chaos. It's agitation. If you're agitated, there's probably something confusing going on. It's being in a total disarrangement. It sort of fits with verse 19 that we read earlier. It says, "By but the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Hmm. So let's go on to some of the, the symptoms of confusion. You can fill them in with one word or a whole sentence. The first symptom of confusion, you know confusion is in your life, is when you start to hesitate. Yeah. Increasing state of hesitation in making decisions. The second one would be a hopelessness. Or you could even put fear. And usually the hopelessness and the fear will turn into depression. So you could put any of those three words in there. Those are symptoms of confusion. The third one is this. Our faith seems non-existent. In other words, our faith becomes weak. And we know that Satan, in the, according to the scripture in, the, in Revelation, says Satan is the author of confusion. Wow. So we know that he's trying to tear down our faith. He's trying to wear us out. In the book of Daniel, it talks about what it's going to be in the ends of time, which I believe that we're in. The church is nearing closer and closer to the end. What is he going to do? He's going to wear the saints out. He's wearing people out with the pandemic. He's wearing people out with ungodliness, wearing people out in different ways. And then the fourth way 
A symptom, I mean, of confusion would be separations, division. How many of you would say, I think we live in a divided nation? Yeah. Yeah. That's confusion. It brings separation and division, even into families. It, just, it destroys relationships. And there's some families that are fighting against each other because of their political stance now. And it seems to be worldwide. So we need to know what to do with confusion. We need to, to understand confusion. That sounds like an oxymoron, understanding confusion. That's like jumbo shrimp, right? Or, or like wicked good. You know, if you grew up in New England like my girls did, those six states up on the corner there, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, all that, they still say that, the kids and everybody, wicked. Everything's wicked good. Or I heard a guy one time say, he goes, I'm a conservative liberal. I'm like scratching my head on that one. How can you be a conservative liberal? That's an oxymoron. It's like a freezer burn. Here's another oxymoron. Junior high sleepover. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> or deafening silence. You see, understanding is the biggest part of the battle that you and I must overcome. We need to understand when these dark times come and confusion starts to set in. We need, we need some understanding. And understanding brings light. And the light casts out the darkness. And aren't you glad that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If we have Jesus, we can cast out the darkness of confusion at any time. Praise God. Satan is known as the prince of darkness. And as I said earlier, the author of confusion. When, we, when you open up and I open up our shades at night, did you notice that the darkness does not flow into your house? It's like, don't, honey, Roger, don't, don't put the shade up because all the darkness is going to kill all the light in the house. We're going to have to turn on more lights. No, it doesn't work that way, does it? No, 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 no. No, it's the other way around. When we open up our shades at night, darkness not, does not flow into the house, but light flows out into the darkness. I walked in here, uh, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, and it was, the sun was shining, and I could see a light cast it up on that wall over there. And it wasn't the sun. I'm like, what in the world? And we're out there, and that's a little lamp that we have in the foyer out there. And it was just shining so bright, this little light. You see, we don't need a lot of light. All we need is a little bit of light. So all we need is a little bit of faith in the one who says he is the light of the world, and that is Jesus. Light is powerful. It's much more powerful than darkness. I will always come Overcome, excuse me, I will always overcome darkness, and you will, when we can say, Jesus is my light. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You see, the Christian life is a life of increasing light and clarity, and we are growing in truth. Jesus said, I'm not only the light, he said, he's the, he's the truth. And Satan is a liar. And so whenever we're going into confusion, we're going backwards. But we can walk in confidence and boldness if we know Jesus, our light. He's bringing clarity to our life. Satan brings disorder to our life. Whenever your thoughts start to get jumbled, it's not because you have dementia. You might. But, but it's because the enemy uses confusion in order to govern this earth. Because the Bible clearly states that he's the God of this world, that he's the God of this age. He was cast down out of heaven, and he rules and he reigns. He called the prince of the power of the air. That's why he's got on the airwaves. That's why he can control media. He can control what goes over the radio, what goes over our television. And we need the light to expose the darkness and penetrate the darkness. It doesn't even take a lot of light. Praise God for that. So if you compare the two verses that we read earlier, one says, 
Hey, the path of the righteous. And that would be us because we have Jesus Christ, the righteous one, who has shed his blood for us. The path of the righteous, that's you and I, hopefully today, is like the morning sun. Shining ever, ever brighter till the full light of day. But the other category, there's only two, is the confusion and the darkness of this world where verse 19 says, but the way of the wicked is like deep darkness and they do not know what makes them stumble. Hmm. Let's go on. But another thing in your notes is this. What is the main door of confusion? The main door of confusion is departing from the path of righteousness. It's compromising what we know is right. Once we compromise what we know is right, confusion enters our life. It's slow. It's very gradual. It sort of just creeps in really slow, sort of like the fog did yesterday. How would you love that? Wasn't that beautiful scenery we had yesterday? You couldn't even hardly see your hands in front of your face in that fog. And you know, people that live in the fog all the time, they just, well, that's just the way it is. It's a kid like that. But no, we have glorious light. We need to not compromise what we know is right. Simple obedience to Jesus and living by his word is the ultimate way out of confusion. So our goal must be to know the truth, which is Jesus Christ, who says he's not only truth, but he's light. To know him and know that and obey whatever he says. He says, if you love me, you'll obey me. And that's what every parent wants too. They don't, they don't want want their kids, you know, to sloppily always give them a kiss or anything. They also want their child to obey them. And when their child's obeying them, it says to the parent, well, I've done something right here and my child loves me. That's a good thing. Now let's go on. If unrighteousness is led into our lives, we must honestly and openly admit it and then repent of it. And then that frees us from confusion. We're set free. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, a very familiar verse. We all should know this. We should be able to quote it. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sin and, un and unrighteousness will always blur our vision and open us up to confusion. The devil complicates life. That's his goal. He wants to complicate your life and my life. He wants to complicate, especially the work of God. He wants to complicate what's going on in churches. He wants to complicate, complicate, complicate. And Jesus simplifies life. Uh, here's some proof of it. If you want, you can turn over, if you've got your Bible app or whatever, turn over to 2 Corinthians. That's 2 Corinthians. Most of your Bibles will have a 2 in front of it. And when you get to 2 Corinthians, we're going to look at chapter 11. And Paul is talking to the church here, and he's talking about false teachers and false apostles. And then he comes up with this, starting at verse 3 of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And what a way to start off. This is what he says. He says, but I am afraid. I don't picture Paul being afraid of anything, but there are certain things he was afraid of. He's afraid of confusion. He's afraid of the darkness of the enemy. He says, but I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray. And that phrase, led astray, is very key right there. In your Bible, it might say bewitched. So Eve was tricked by the enemy, Satan. And he says, I am hoping that you won't be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preach, you see there are a lot of people out there preaching a different Jesus, and I have to say this, and hello everybody from our conference out there, hi, hi Bishop, if you watch me, I don't think you do, or as District Superintendent, uh, hello, we are te our denomination is teaching two different Jesuses. We are. And that's why we're splitting. And it says... 
if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preach, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you receive, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. Wow. You see, that word led astray is the word bewitched. In other words, it's witchcraft. In other words, Satan was in the garden with Eve, with Eve and he, he's rebelling against God. And that's what witchcraft is. Witchcraft is just rebellion against God. I was sharing this with Kristen, bringing her into the, into the conversation here. Poor lady has to be back there all the time. I was talking about there's different areas of our country are influenced by different demonic powers. Of course, most of you know New England, most parts of New England, that power would be a very dark one that would be witchcraft. You know, we had Salem there, and there's been New Age movement there. All most of the cults started in New England. And so uh, I've had the uh, not the privilege, not the honor, but I've had many a times where I was in a church service and there were witches there, or there were people that were part of the occult were there to disrupt. They were there to, to do harm, to bring darkness and confusion. Do you know what drove them out? It wasn't the pastors preaching. It would drive them out of the building before the pastor even got up and said anything. And I remember one time I preached in Putnam, Connecticut, near Woodstock, where witchcraft was really strong. And two witches came up to an altar call, praise God, gave their hearts to Jesus. They told me who they were. But the thing of it is, is the worship of the people drove them out. I had seen them come and stand in the back of the church. They would be sitting down, they'd get up, they couldn't take it anymore as people were worshiping God. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. And then they say, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. And when the congregation was really into that, they were clapping. Those people that came to disturb get back you know, Sometimes you see them up against the back of the wall. And then they finally leave. You see, confusion is our choice. We can go to Jesus Christ at any time, the light of the world, and push out the darkness. You see, witchcraft is complicated patterns and formulas and incant incantations, and Satan makes his followers jump through hoops. Jesus just says, believe in me. Follow me. Love me, and if you love me, you obey me. Simple as that. Isn't that wonderful that we can follow the light of the world and dispel all the confusion and despair that is around us? Praise God. The devil caused Eve to question God. And he still does that today. He said to Eve, did God really say that, that you couldn't eat from that tree? Eve looked around at the fruit on that forbidden tree, and uh, the devil had talked to her and said, well, why, would God not, why would God deny you something so beautiful, something so good, it looks so good? He, he doesn't really love you. And so she, well, maybe he doesn't really love me if he won't let me have this tree. Well, why, why the restrictions? What, what a restricted God. One tree out of millions, right? That's all, all they had to do was eat of that tree, and they said, if you eat of that tree, you'll surely die. In other words, something bad's going to happen. But God didn't really mean what he said. I'm going to eat of that tree anyways. And that's what brings confusion into our life, is when we don't believe what God said, and what God says, that really there won't be any consequences. That his grace is so strong. I'll just go ahead and continue to sin. And God will just forgive me. Well. It's like the fog coming in. It gets thicker. And thicker. And then it gets dark at night. You try to drive through the fog in the dark. That's a lot of fun, isn't it? Hmm. 
If someone ever stepped out in front of your vehicle, wow, big trouble. The next thing we're going to look at, the fear of man and confusion. But once we start fearing people, confusion will set in. Simplicity of pleasing God, not other people, is what we need to be doing. I learned this very quick. I, I didn't really... I didn't really grow up in church that much. You know, we, did, we went on Christmas and Easter, and then after Easter, we went a couple Sundays to try to impress the pastor. And then, then he worked my father and I into being ushers one time. You know, I thought he'd get us, put, be a part of that, and we did that for a couple months. And then he laid off, and we just didn't go to church anymore, you know. And where am I going with this? I'm going somewhere with this. But anyways, so I didn't know much about church. But when I, I get hired for the Lord, it was like, boom, like that. And then I went right off to college to study to be a pastor. So I had no church experience at all. So I just thought, well, my first place of ministry, everybody's just going to love me. Yeah. Well, I learned that out on my internship. I was still in college studying, and I did a summer internship at a very large church in Schenectady, New York. Probably 400, 500 people. And the pastor had multiple staff, and I saw how they beat the crap out of him. That congregation did. And I'm like, wow, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Hello? So then I go to my first place of ministry, and I become full time. I'm in the associate, and there's two of us, and there's probably about 200, 300 people, and I'm still thinking. That I'm going to get 100 or 200 people all to like me. Well, and I'm going to be able to please everybody. I found out that two of us full-time pastors couldn't even please 50% of the people. You see, and when we try to do that, that's when depression comes in. Separation comes in. Darkness comes in. Confusion comes in. We only need to please one person. And that person came in a human form, in a human body. It's God, the incarnate, Jesus Christ. That's the only one that we are supposed to be pleasing. And today, I don't have to do anything to please you. I just have to please Jesus. And that sure takes a big load off of me because I've tried it before. I've tried to please everybody. And then I get really depressed and confused because everybody didn't like my decision or they didn't like what I preached or they didn't like how I sang. And it doesn't matter because it's to Jesus. It's not to anybody else. And it's the same for each and every one of us. We need to get rid of the fear of man because all it brings is confusion. We need to remember to focus our eyes on the one and only Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Focusing on what other people think of us, want from us, or expect from us is going to kill us. To live in the fear of the Lord rather in the fear of man will dispel most darkness. Now, I'm going to read a quote to you. It's sort of long, but listen to it closely. It's by a Christian pastor who wrote many books. His name is Rick Joyner. And I love this, and we're going to close with this. And then we're going to sing, It is well with my soul. And when we sing, It is well with my soul, we're going to sing it like we mean it, push out darkness, despair, confusion. And we're going to let the light of Jesus shine in our hearts. But this is what Rick Joyner said. He said, if, if confusion or inconsistency is in you, it will come out in your relationship to your children, your spouse, your co-workers, and everyone else. However, we are all this way until we have been perfected in Christ. Did you hear that? And I have yet to meet anyone, he says, who has fully attained to that. Therefore, we must all learn to live in love. That will cover a multitude of sins. We need to be forgiving to other people's inconsistencies just as they are having to forgive ours. Then he says this, I, this last part is so powerful. He says, Christians are all in the process of being delivered from the confusion of this world. We're in the process of being delivered from confusion in this world. So we're going to be, get confused from time to time. That's why we got to keep going back to the light, back to the light, back to Jesus. 
Then he goes on and he says, we therefore should not allow someone's bad day. I had a bad day this week. Did anybody else? And I allowed it to get me down. Therefore, we should not allow someone's bad day or bad action to ruin our relationship with them. Lord, we come before you today and we ask as we continue this next Sunday, understanding confusion, that Lord, we will be set free. That we'll know what it is to cling to you, to please you, and to walk in the light as you're in the light. We ask it all in the powerful and precious name of Jesus. Amen. And I just ask that we stand up and we sing this next hymn. Let's sing it like we mean it. Let's sing it from our heart. Let's sing our guts out. Let's worship the Lord. Let's push back darkness today with the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat>